Okay, so we are trying to work out uh, the CDF of the Cauchy distribution, uh, i.e. the probability that this uh, random variable t is less than or equal to some little t. And we've said that it's the integral over this blue region of uh, 1 over 2 pi e to the negative r squared divided by 2 r d phi to dr, where we are uh, integrating it using polar coordinates. Okay, uh, so we now just need to work out our bounds. Well, what we need to work out is what this theta, this starting theta value. So we don't, have, we won't need to work out what our starting theta value is because um, we're going to have to integrate it. Firstly, we're going to have to integrate it in two parts. We're going to have to integrate it in this part here and add it to the integral of this part here. Uh, so I will, we'll start with that. We'll say. Uh, this integral 1 here and this integral 2 here. So we're going to split this integral into two parts. So I'll write that out. It's the double integral over um, area 1 of 1 over 2 pi e to the negative r squared over 2 r d theta dr plus the integral over area 2 of uh, one, the PDF 1 over 2 pi e to the negative r squared over 2 r d theta dr. But there is some very beautiful thing here, because if you remember what our PDF was, here is our PDF. So it was this molehill thing. And basically what we're, I, what these integrals are saying is they're going to work out the area under the molehill. Now if I draw area 1 on here, this is area 1 here. So um, this uh, sort of region here is area 1 going off down there. And area 2 is this region here. And basically, the normal, the symmetry of this distribution, the area is going to be ex under, er under, sorry, the area over region 2 is going to be exactly the, under, the, the area for region 2 is going to be exactly the same as the uh, er area under the curve for region 1, basically, because of the symmetry of this distribution. It's exactly the same over here as it is over here. There is exactly a corresponding point uh, for from if you pick any point here, there's a corresponding point over here, basically. Just uh, take its... Um, take its uh, reflection basically in either that line or if you're talking about over here the reflection in that line so take it um, you take the negative of both components and it will have an equivalent of component over here so basically we can just do this integral once so let's say the integral over area 1 uh, and we can multiply it by 2 uh, 1 over 2 pi e to the negative r squared over 2 r d theta dr. So that halves the amount of integration we need to do. And I just want to stress again that that is because the of the symmetry of this distribution. It's exact. It's complete. The all you, the proof of this is just the symmetry. So I'll draw the distribution again, just as one final convincing. So it's just like this. And basically, if I do this integral over this area here and this integral over this area th there, it's exactly the same integral. Uh, if I rotate, indeed, if I rotated this around 180 degrees and, and rotated the PDF like that, it would be exactly the same. So because of the rotational symmetry in that way, this integral is exactly the same as this integral. Okay, so we only need to do the integral over uh, region 1 now. Okay, uh, so... Um, we just need to work out what the limits of integration are going to be. So we need to work out what this starting theta value is. We know what the end theta value is. We want to end at the theta value of pi. So we're varying theta from whatever this starting theta value is, which I'll say theta of little t, because it's going to depend on what little t is. Uh, and it's going to go all the way up to pi here, which is this value here. So we go from p pi, uh, theta of little t to pi. And uh, then uh, the r value is going to vary from 0. So you go from the 0 all the way out to infinity, basically. So for all those values of theta, ranging from theta k to pi, we want to integrate over all the values of dr going off to infinity, basically, from 0 to infinity. OK, uh, so now I just need to work out what theta little t is equal to. Well, uh, we remember that this line here uh, this line uh, is little x over little y is equal to t. Is um, um, So if we want to work out what this theta value is, then um, we, can, uh, we just need to work out 
for a certain value of x, we can just take this triangle basically. So if I take a value of x, then I know what the value of y is because it's given by this formula. y is equal to x divided by t. So if I draw a bigger picture, what I have effectively is a triangle here. Here is my theta value. And I'll have to obviously make sure that the form that I overall get, this is for a positive t value at the moment. We'll have to do it again for when t is negative and make sure that we get a consistent formula. Uh, so we have x over t on this side, we have x here. So what is theta? Well, uh, we can just do the fact that tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that is equal to x over t uh, divided by x. So we're going to get that it's just equal to 1 over t. OK, uh, so uh, that gives us that. So, um, OK, so uh, we could say that cot theta is equal to t, but uh, in fact, let's just leave it as tan of theta is equal to 1 over t. OK, uh, now let's do uh, when uh, t is a negative number. So if you take t as a negative number, that means that you've got a... Uh, we want to make sure that this formula basically still holds when t is a negative number. Uh, so if t is a negative number, you start off with a curve that looks like that, and we want this theta value here. OK, so how would we find that? Uh, well, uh, what we could do is we could find this theta value and then take one uh, pi away from that, couldn't we? Uh, okay, so uh, if we uh, find this, um, let's call this uh, value phi, and uh, we do that using the triangle argument again. So um, this line is given by x divided by y is equal to uh, little t. So x uh, divided by little t is equal to y. Okay, so this value over here is, uh, well, it's actually the negative of x over t, isn't it? Because the x over t is going to be, oh, wait a second. No, 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 it's not going to be equal to that, is it? No, no, that's wrong. Uh, no, that, that bit was right. This bit over here was wrong. It's just going to equal x over t. But this side, obviously, is going to equal negative x. Uh, so we need to make that equal to positive x. So we'll have to put a negative sign in front of it. Because x is negative, we need to multiply it by minus 1 to make it positive. OK, so tan of phi, tan of phi, uh, is equal to uh, the opposite, x over t, divided by uh, negative x, basically. So we therefore get that this is equal to 1 over t. OK, so now what we want is what is uh, phi. Uh, we want, what we want is theta, which is equal to pi minus uh, phi. So we get that tan of theta is equal to tan of uh, pi minus phi. OK, and if we think about this from the graphs, uh, rather than using those awful trigonometric identities, which I don't think I can remember, uh, the tan curve looks something like this. OK, and if we basically, if we take, um, what we know is that tan of phi is equal to negative 1 over t. t is a negative number, so this gives us some positive number. So phi is some number less than uh, pi over 2, so it's somewhere down here. And then if we take pi by pi minus phi, that's going to equal a value over here. So this is pi minus phi. And basically, it's just going to equal the negative of what it was here. So this indeed is going to equal 1 over t. Uh, the reason being, I just want to state the reason again, that uh, the symmetry of the tan curve, basically, if we take phi, it's over here, some number less than pi over 2. If we take pi minus phi, it's the same distance from pi as uh, phi is from 0. And basically, uh, the symmetry of this, this bit here, going from here like here is the same as this bit going up like there. So uh, there's a correspondence here, like this one going up like that is the same as this one going down like that, apart from that it's the negative. So if we want what is tan of pi minus phi, it's just going to be the negative of what tan of phi is. So this is just negative tan of phi is what we'd find if you did apply, uh, if you can remember the trigonometric identity. And you, well, I'd have had to derive it again from, uh, I would have been able to get the sine and the cos one and then um, I'd have had to put them over one another. And that the, But there's no need. We can uh, do it just using the graphs. OK, so we do get that tan of theta is equal to 1 over t. So this, this formula we have here, that tan of theta is equal to 1 over t, that works whether t is negative or positive. So that's excellent. That's nice that we have a consistent formula. So we have tan of phi is equal to 1 over t. So we therefore have that theta is equal to arc tan of 1 over t. Excellent. Right. Uh, so, um, 
the uh, wait a second is that uh, okay uh, is there going to be a problem with that um, there potentially is a problem with that and I will tell you the reason why uh, the reason is that uh, arctan the function arctan is uh, generally it's um, if you define arctan you generally define it as uh, it's going to act on the positive and negative numbers, but it generally looks something like this. This is the way you define it. And you define it as mapping you b between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that's going to be a problem if we just stick that into, our, uh, in, in, into here. And we'll continue this in the next video. I'm being summoned.